Good afternoon, welcome to episode 10 of my K20 Integra race car build. Uh, last time we left off I'd finished the wiring and got the car started for the first time. Since then, been to the dyno, had that tuned. I'll um, put in some footage and a few dyno charts later on. Uh, but this weekend I've just been getting it ready for track testing. So I've got a private hire at the local racetrack at Wanneroo in Perth uh, later this week. And just got to get a wheel alignment before that and we're good to go. So what I've been doing is just tidying off all the small jobs, getting the cosmetics taken care of, and getting it all ready to go. So first and most obviously is the, the cosmetics. Um, just got an eBay front lip, just raw plastic on the front of it, but it really cleans it up nicely. I like the look of it. Side skirts, um, my local fabricator, Frankie at Not Scared, had some PCI style skirts um, bent and made up, so those are on, and they're all trimmed out for the sill tubes which is where the axle stands go into the side. Just painted those up in some matte black. And at the back I've got a fake Type R wing just for now. Later on I'll do a proper aero kit on it, uh, but for now this will do the job. I had a crack at painting that with some colour matched paint, just in spray cans, uh, but it took it out all right. Looks good if you don't look too closely at it. Um, it'll do the job for now, but it's by no means perfect. Really stoked with how the car looks. It looks really nice and aggressive. Um, the skirts and the front lips and the, the size of like the fitment of the wheels make it look quite aggressive, but it's actually not that low to the ground. It's still got heaps of clearance, probably good four or five inches underneath skirts and lip. Also had some bonnet catches put in, just some aero catches. Um, they actually don't sit down quite far enough, so there's a small gap in the front of the bonnet. It lines up well with the guards, but not quite with the bumper, so I just put some rubber weather strip along there to hide hide that gap somewhat. Also had an exhaust made up three inch the whole way through with just a single rear muffler. Uh, also by Frankie at Not Scared at Racing and Fabrication. I'll throw in some photos of that now. He did a beautiful job. It's um, really stunning, really well done. It sounds quite aggressive, it's quite loud. Uh, we'll see if I'm okay with that over time. I wanted to start pretty loud for a start, just not worry about a resonator in the middle. And then later on I can add in another resonator or change the muffler if I really need to. Um, but yeah, as, you, as we'll see on the dyno video soon, it certainly sounds pretty good at 9000 RPM. Also fitted up the side Lexan windows. These are just held in with a couple of cable ties, they're super lightweight. These here are also Lexan. Uh, this is glass just for the moment because I'm changing to a carbon rear trunk and once I do that I'll put the Lexan rear screen in as well. That'll be a nice weight saving. Inside the car we've now got passenger seat and we've got harnesses all around. My co-driver Adrian Burney popped over the other night and we got all those set up and adjusted for the proper lengths and angles. Uh, so the interior is fully ready to go. I also added a bunch of little grommets and plugs to try and seal up the interior uh, from all the holes of the stuff that I've removed along the way. Um, no doubt a little bit of water will still get in if it's a wet event, but not too much. Also put in some SFI rated roll cage padding, which is a requirement here in Australia, anywhere that your head can touch. So I've got two pieces just along the side and along the uh, V up the top. Uh, we have quite good clearance for our helmets anyway, these seats are nice and low. So everything's pretty good in the interior. I am waiting for some foot boxes, so there'll be a carbon fibre navigator's footrest which kind of boxes in the, the footwell, and the driver's just a flat plate that goes under the pedals. Once those arrive that'll clean this up a bit and stop people's legs being able to touch all my electronics, which is good. And lastly, just in the engine bay. Had a cold air intake made up. That just shoots down into the guard and the pod filter is right behind the front bumper, right under the headlight. That's also Frankie at Not Scared. He's done a really fantastic job of that. You'll also see some little orange marks on all the bolts. That's called check seal. Uh, quite a similar concept to just paint marking bolts, but it's a little sort of goo that hardens. It's a lot easier to tell if the if the bolt has actually rotated or the nut has rotated on the bolt. So I've got that everywhere critical, so it's all on the suspension, all on the brakes, underneath the car. Um, and as 
at a glance between events when I'm doing my maintenance so I can just sort of see where everything's at. So yeah, really stoked with how everything's turned out. It's been a heap of hard work to get to this point. Uh, but we're now ready to test. But before we do that, we'll jump across and talk about the dyno. So the dyno session actually went really well, a lot better than I expected. Uh, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, this is my first time trying anything like this, and especially the wiring side is very complex. Uh, it took a long time to do, and everything pretty much worked perfectly, so super happy. Uh, went to Wanted Motorsport here in Perth and tuned by Mick as the... Uh, the contract tuner there, so chucked it on a mainline hub dyno um, and they spun that up. The only issue they did have is I'd set up the clutch switch backwards in the ECU so the car thought it was in launch control the whole time. Super simple fix, once I got rid of that I could start mapping it. We did a full flex fuel tune, so 98 and e right the way through to E85. Um, and power was better than I expected actually, so really healthy for it was just a, a stock K, K20 with a set of Toda cams in it, Toda Spec C cams, um, Kelford's, Kelford valve springs and Kelford titanium retainers. So we riveted it out to about 9,000, that's about as far as I'm comfortable going with the uh, stock oil pump. It's probably pushing it a wee bit, but whatever. Um, and it was still making power at 9,000, so both runs on 98 and E85, peak power was right at the top of that rev range. So. It does pull really cleanly, heaps of mid-range, the torque curve is super flat and that's what I love about these particular Toda cams is that they have quite a large non-VTEC lobe so instead of sort of being, you know, nothing down low, just a regular economy, economy sort of cam lobe and then switch onto a big VTEC, it's actually a much smoother transition, you, you barely see, you can't even see the transition in the dyno charts uh, but you do hear it in the intake noise which you'll hear in the video. So I'll just check up the first dyno chart which is um, 98 fuel, so 218 horsepower at the hubs. Again, really stoked with that. Um, very healthy numbers. Power to weight based on that. It's actually pretty similar to my old Evo 7, which was like 350 horsepower at the wheels. This is how light these things are. Um, and yeah, as I said, it revs to the moon and still making power up top. Jumping across to E85, uh, with the pump E85 that we got here in Perth, it was about 79% ethanol was about the best that they got to. That added, I think, about 10 horsepower and, and 20 odd, 15, 20 odd newton metres of torque, which is a big dump, jump in torque. Pretty happy with that. So we ended up with, I think, 232 horsepower at the hubs. Um, and yeah, torque's really healthy too. So very happy with those results. Um, took it for a quick squirt down the streets right after the dyno. Car's actually too cold, and the radiator works too well. So I need to. Uh, Basically, if you're driving around, the running temperature will be like below the engine protection to say that you haven't warmed up yet. So I need to play around with that and potentially block off some of the radiator. Um, but yeah, so I'll chuck on just a quick dyno video now. Um, yeah, sounds really good and we'll, we'll hear that. So now it's time to get out, get a wheel alignment and get testing. Uh, we'll catch up with you again at the racetrack. Hello and welcome from the track. We're up here at Wanneroo Raceway, uh, now known as carco.com.au Raceway, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we'll go with Wanneroo. Um, just had the wheel alignment done this morning and got a fresh set of Advan 050s mounted on the front there. There's some softs, so I've got softs all around, which is perfect for rally sprints. Uh, but too soft for the circuit, but fine enough to do um, testing that we're doing today. Got up here quite early, a couple of hours before my allotted time, so just been setting things up, checking it over, uh, getting the data screen set up, ready to check temperatures, etc. when I come in for the first session. Our uh, plan will be to go out and just bed in the brakes in the first session, get everything up to temp, uh, just sort of drive around a few relatively easy laps, come in, let the brakes cool off, go out and then just progressively start going a wee bit harder, sort of, you know, 60-70% for a few laps in a session, come in, check everything, go out 80%, repeat, um, and hopefully have a crack at some launches as well, just 
we'll see how it gets off the line. We'll see the launch control RPM to 4500. We'll see how that goes. I can adjust it up or down. And also this morning, just after the alignment, I stopped it in the egg. Wanted motorsport with Quang, and we had Heltic on the phone, just um, refining what, how we'd set up the auto blip and flat shift. So if I get time, I've only got the track for an hour, so it's pretty quick. Um, I'll check those settings and see if they need to be adjusted as well. Beautiful day here today. It's about 26 degrees and good breeze. A bit too sunny. It's the wrong time of day to be setting PVs, but I'm not here to set a PV. I'm here to shake the thing down and see how it goes at, at full race temperatures. So perfect for that. Um, I'll have the GoPro on in the sessions and I'll try and do a bit of commentary after each session and, and see how we go. Alrighty, so we're all back home now. Um, what we'll do, I took GoPro footage of the sessions that I had out on track, so I'll intersperse that through this and I'll just talk through what went on. So first time went out, uh, first session was just to bed in the brakes. So I did that, I found I had way too much rear brake bias and it was locking up, but that's fine. That got them all set up pretty good. Uh, it was sort of three or four very medium laps just cruising around. Um, everything seemed to be fine, temperatures were holding good. So came in, let the brakes rest for a bit, checked over for leaks, there's nothing, it's all looking good. Um, tires are fine, everything was fine. Um, yeah, just let those brakes rest for a while, checked over the data from the engine, it was all good. So we'll just chuck in that session now. Um, it'll just be like a very quick amount of me just fanging down the straights and getting on the brakes. Next session is session two. This one went uh, a fair bit better, so went out and started to put some pace into the car. Uh, just cruised around, like not pushing too hard, let's say, let's call it 80%. I uh, ended up with a one minute eight lap time, which is pretty good for just cruising. Um, it sort of definitely was not pushing in the corners and definitely not pushing in the braking zones. Um, target for this car is like a one minute three, so to be out for the first time doing sort of five seconds off or just tooling around it is pretty good. So we'll chuck in some footage of this now. Um, I've also got some external footage thanks to, to Ronan who was down on the day. So I'll chuck that on afterwards too for a couple of flybys. It sounds pretty wild.
third session, so third third session didn't go so well. So after I came in after the um, the last one, just sort of let it rest for a bit, checked over some things. All felt good. Got down into pit lane and it was just a bit sort of missy. Um, headed out to try and do the lap and the car was just missing straight away under load. So tilted around for the rest of that lap. Uh, came in and free revved it and it seemed it was completely fine. Um, so went out for another attempt and it was just missing straight away. So came back in. Um, a bit disappointing and then came up try to diagnose it uh, by the time I got back to the pits it was just running on three cylinders so I called it a day there pretty happy overall I'd give it like a five out of ten for um, for I guess success of the test day um, car handle great sort of brakes work well shocks work well tires work well as to be expected it's a pretty proven recipe for what I'm doing here I uh, just got to iron out the little bits you know with the engine get that all humming along and get ready for the next event so Next weekend, what I'll be doing is just working through the the systems that contribute to an engine losing a cylinder one by one. So first of all is check spark plugs, check the coils, check the wiring to the coils, um, check injectors, check fuel filter, just work through that sort of stuff. I took all the tools with me but did not have a spark plug socket which is a bit dumb so I couldn't take them out for a look on the day but by the time I'd found the issue um, the hour that I booked was up anyway so pretty happy it's cool to really drive it um, yeah like I said before it sounds great so plenty to build on from here um, I'll close this one out here just after show you one little thing um, but yeah so plenty to do this weekend to get ready for the Bunbury rally sprint which is in two weeks time real quick quickly though had a nice delivery today so I've ordered some carbon fiber foot plates this is the navigator one so it bolts into the passenger footwell um, it's got raised grip on them so you're not sort of super slippery this will yeah, bolt down and give them something to, to brace on and that'll also uh, kind of hide some of that wiring in the passenger footwell and protect it as well and then for the driver which got the same thing but flat so this will be down there um, my heels will rest on this when I'm on the pedals uh, it just raises it off the floor a little bit which is pretty good and just gives you a bit more grip so pretty stoked with those they were not cheap but I didn't want to put aluminium in there you got to go carbon Pretty happy we'll get those in this weekend too but yeah we'll close it out that's the dyno and first test video um all goes pretty well so got to keep on moving and keep on developing get into a good spot thank you we'll see you next time